a blessed Friday to us. One professor asked the students, are there only 12 apostles? If I will ask you that question, what is your answer? Are there only 12 apostles? What is it? Is it a no or no? Oh, what about choice? <laughs> The 12 apostles that are being read in today's gospel reading are specifically mentioned precisely because these 12 would represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And Jesus' intention of sending them you know, is actually to create the so-called new Israel. But on the other hand, Mary Magdalene, from the 5th century tradition, is considered also an apostle. Okay, remember, we have a feast you know, of St. Mary Magdalene, supposed to be only a, a memorial, but was elevated to become a feast. And she is considered the apostle to the apostles. And then there is also St. Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. So what is interestingly important here to note is that this special 12 people that he chose actually has a particular purpose a particular symbolism, but everyone actually is called an apostle. But before anyone can be called an apostle, he or she has to first become a disciple. So what, what is the significant difference therefore? Disciple or discipleship is following the Lord. And in fact, that is mentioned in today's gospel reading. The appointing of the twelve is actually for the purpose of being with him. And being with him is to follow him, to follow him on the road, to follow him on the journey. But then, discipleship has to become something like reaching its point or fulfill, fulfilling its purpose when one who follows the Lord now becomes the one who is being sent. And that's the reason why we have another word related to apostle, and that word is missionary. No? Because apostle comes from the Greek, missionary comes from the Latin, and missionary or mission means to be sent. And this is practically the nature of our church. This is what our faith is all about. It is not something that we just ac accumulate. It is something that we have to share. And by sharing, we have to be sent forth. But then, another challenge comes. Because it is not enough to be able to share. Because we cannot share what we do not have. Naipapular kayo nga saying sa Latin nga, Nemo dat quod non abet. Nemo dat quod non abet. Masabi po sa butana. You cannot give what you do not have. That's why being an apostle has to begin with discipleship. Nanoman, because it is in the discipleship that we learn, we accumulate, we actually accept, we embrace, especially the person, the teachings, and the deeds of Jesus. And only then that we are able to share him to other people. So you cannot give what you do not have. Now, in the context of our uh, of our lives, Karon, what is the process that makes us disciples in order to become apostles? We call it catechism. No? Catechesis. And again, let me just, mahilig mangugug play of words, no? What is the etymology of catechesis? Catechism is cut throughout, but echo is uh, throughout or breaking. Echo is I have. So to break what I have. And that is what happens in catechesis. You have to share what you have, but you cannot share what you do not have. No? So whatever we have embraced, whatever is being taught to us, and hopefully, in sakto po nga gitod lo, eh, kaya di man ta magpatakar o share o dili di mao. No? That's why we need to study as well. It's not only seminarians who study in the seminary. All of us are required to study the Word of God, the many different teachings that we have, it is always a considered a school of life. And from that school, we continue to propagate 
whatever we have embraced, whatever is entrusted to us, and most of all, continue to follow the Lord, to walk in the journey of faith, as we call it in how many years already? Synod or synodality. To share what we have and even to acquire even more what still needs to be embraced and to be learned so that we will become uh, equipped with what the kingdom of God demands for us. But most of all, it is our life that we are sharing. And we are all apostles. Amen.